Hello and welcome to a very Samsung TV repair edition of Mark Fixes Stuff. This is a Samsung 40 inch LCD TV. It's one of the older types and the uh, model number is down there. Okay. However, we have a problem insofar as if we plug it in, all that we get is this. Constant clicking. Okay, so this is quite a common problem with um, these Samsungs, and it's down to, you guessed it, capacitors in the power stage. So uh, we're going to have a quick look at that, see how easy it is actually to repair it with a very small amount of soldering skill, and uh, get this TV working again. It was actually destined for landfill, but was donated to the channel by Andre and Fred, so thank you very much. Okay, so having turned the unit around, we're gonna to have to um, put it on its face now. It's quite a heavy unit. Luckily, you've got the um, foam covering bag, I suppose it is, that the um, Donatees TV, new TV came in. So I'm gonna use that to protect both the table and the television screen. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that you have gotta be really quite quite careful laying these down because they are quite fragile, especially these slightly older models which are really quite heavy comparatively speaking to the LED um, variants that we have today. Okay, um, just sort of remains to be seen as move that mind camera shot there. Remains to be said that obviously any repairs that you undertake are completely at your own risk any loss of life, damage to limb or injury that you may suffer as a result of looking at my video and deciding to have a go is completely, again, at your own risk. I don't encourage you in any way to do this, although I am showing you my process. So I take and accept no responsibility or liability for any loss, damage, or otherwise to persons or persons unknown. Lovely. Right. Uh, without further ado, I think what we'll do is we'll grab a screwdriver. That's a Phillips number two. And start wanging out the screws. Okay, so there's one. As usual, we will find a little pot for these in a moment because I'm not that prepared. As usual. <laughs> This is where having a magnetic screwdriver really, really, really does help. So uh, there we go. Now I'm not going to bore you with me taking out all the rest of the screws. So um, here's a little speed up video for you. Three, two, one, and lift off. Probably a good idea to give that a bit of a clean. I'm just going to pop this over here on a flat surface. Right, so what we're looking at here is the logic board for the inputs. It's quite a well um, appointed logic board. And here's the power board. So uh, here's a closer look at that. Okay, so a closer look at the board. Um, just to say there are a couple of very zappy components here. I'd stay well away from this one, especially not touching the underside unless you are in for an actual shock. Now, I'm lucky enough to have an ESR meter right here. Now, an ESR meter is a piece of equipment that you can use to check the internal health of a capacitor because using a capacitance check on a multimeter just tells you how much capacitance it has and not whether it's gone high resistance, which is often the problem in dried out or worn capacitors. So um, I'm not going to use this tool in order to show you how to do it without this sort of 100 pound plus tool. So um, some of the things that you're looking for with worn capacitors um, are the domes have capped, like this one here, the domes have popped rather, like I can see immediately this one here is popped 
and this one here looks like it's going and even if it hasn't it looks like it's a similar rating to that one and it's next to this bloody great big heat sink now heat sinks take the heat from these regulators or transistors whatever they are can't see quite quite from here and um, they chuck it out as heat right over the top of these capacitors that have a fluid in them that dries out electrolytic fluid and then your TV won't start so I'm going to start by changing these two capacitors and seeing if we can fire it back up so um, first we're going to unplug the board hands like an ox two, just squeeze them in at the top three um, earth power from the socket here can't quite see the IEC socket but it's a three pin what we call in the UK kettle lead so that's the power out of there you can see the thicker gauge to allow the higher current we do have a bit of a clean up inside here as well um, this great big loom out of the logic board took that to one side and this one here, I won't bother showing you the usual close-ups of the sockets because um, it's a bit redundant really. They should only go back in the right sockets but um, just in case I've laid them out in the order which they will go back in. Cool, now to unscrew the board. Bearing in mind my earlier warning of not touching the underside of the board because those capacitors will still have a bit of a kick in them. And once we've got the board out then we can have a closer look. One, two, um, most LCD TVs <laughs> that suffer from the click click not turning on or weirdness around coming out of standby mode have usually got some sort of capacitor issue, um, to be honest. So um, it's always worth having a look and trying not to kill yourself in the process. There's a screw down here. There is a proper process for discharging large capacitors which whilst it's useful to know you wouldn't have the equipment for so I'm not going to go into it. Suffice it to say please don't kill yourself on my watch. Come down here, completely blocking the lights. Actually using new LED floodlights for this. Um, I've got two of them. They're meant to be equivalent to 500 watts each which Probably isn't right, but um, there's certainly a lot less boiling to work underneath. So uh, close-up work should be a bit better in future videos. Right, but I'm still getting used to them. Oh, one more screw there. Thanks. I bet you saw that and just wait for me to notice. You could have shouted out. Thanks, YouTube. Okay, so that's out there, and we'll lift this board off. Bearing in mind that big capacitor there, no touchy touchy. Okay, and uh, I'm going to lay it down this way, out the way of the TV, and what I'm going to do is move the main TV chassis out the way. And for that, I am going to lift it up a bit like this. Probably going to go and lay this across the set here because luckily the kids aren't in at the moment. And we're back, and now we can have a closer look at the board and the capacitors that I suspect are the culprits. Sorry if my voice is going in there. I'm just going to this chair because I am fundamentally getting quite old. Right, so I just put this down a little bit. We angle the lights so we can see what we're doing, and we'll pull this forward. Now, I suspect these caps here. Now it can be quite difficult to tell on the flat plane, but as soon as I start to um, lift it up, you can see that these are actually domed on the top. You can see that it doesn't look that healthy underneath either, or well I can see. So um, we are going to take that out. So I'm just going to fire up the soldering iron, pull those two capacitors out, see what value they are, and um, replace them. And on this board they are CM. 880 and CM876. These others are all completely flat on top, so I've no reason to suspect them. Um, I'm quite 
anal about this sort of thing, so I'll probably chuck the ESR meter on them after you've gone home. But we'll see if just changing the ones that we can see will fix the television, which is actually quite an interesting experiment, really. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do before I do anything is I'm going to remove this base because it's becoming a bit of a pain in my ass. As I've removed all the screws from the back, it is simply a matter of sliding it down out of these retaining notches. So I'm going to use my usual technique of um, just taking the cap, heating the, other, the uh, legs or the leads on the other side of the board and pulling it out. Please excuse the autofocus. Um, I'm gripping the capacitor in question on this side of the board and turn it slightly so that we can see where it's clearly actually marked on this board which is very helpful which is CM880 pick up my iron which I've just turned on wipe off the tinning and then just carefully remove the legs just apply a little bit on the a uh, little bit of pressure on the component itself not so much that I'm pulling the plating off of the through via okay, a little bit of a solder splatter there but no mess, no fuss I do actually have a really good solder sucker and I would be using it at the moment except I'm working around a camera and it becomes slightly more difficult so there's the component out now we can see looking at this component that it has definitely seen better days oh yeah that well-known brand KSC look how bulge that I mean look how bulge that little blighter is and also the seal at the bottom is really really gone look so it started to leak electrolytic fluid out of one part of that capacitor. So that is a 1000 microfarad uh, 25 volt. I'm going to replace like for like. You can go higher on the voltage but not too much higher. Um, so next we're going to remove the next component which is this one here which if I recall correctly is uh, CM87 Five or six, eight, seven, six. But we'll know when we look at the back of the board because it's helpfully silk screened on to the board. So we got CM eight, seven, six right there. One thing I will say for the uh, Samsung boards is they're very well marked up. Try not to make such a mess of uh, this one. As always, my uh, stock excuse is I'm working around the camera. You won't be. We go. Must say the 10 mile digital soldering station is absolute gem. Absolute gem. Really does make this a breeze. So uh, there's the second one. Now this one looks a bit healthier. As we can see here that it's not bulged quite so much. Although it doesn't look super duper healthy. Any signs of leakage at the bottom? Not really, no. So it looks like this one here first one we removed, oh, going to focus your bugger and it's taken the uh, start out. Some of the symptoms you'll find with TVs that um, do this sort of thing are um, they'll take longer and longer to start up then they'll take like 20 minutes to get going and then they'll warm up or they'll turn on straight away after they've been um, left on for some considerable time um, but the real kicker here is when you open it up and you find capacitors which are like that. Okay, so obviously it's very important to clean up any um, solder splatters. Um, you can sometimes just use the hot tip of the iron to gather it all back in. Um, I'm going to use my video repair tool which has a silicone tip and enables me to get right in onto the tip of the iron because it's um, heat resistant way past the melting point of the solder which is nice. When you're reworking boards you often do things like you find this little tiny scratch where I was working around the camera but um, can't worry too much about it because 
might have a little scratch but it's going to be working after this whereas before it was not. Let's make sure there's no um, little bits of solder hanging about. Pour waste solder out of my solder sucker. And this last point here. Okay, they're nice and deep. Okay, just pick that up. Lovely. So always looks a bit worse on camera than it does in real life for some reason. So um, this looks great to the naked eye, but I can see lots of tiny little bits and bobs. However, it will be fine at the end. We'll always check for solder splatters or joint tracks. Obviously, that isn't a broken track by the way, it's just a scratch and lamination. And huzzah! It would appear that I do have some in stock, some 1000 microfarad, 25 volt. Now these are a bit thicker, a bit rounder than the uh, ones I've taken out, but they are the same value. Um, I think these are slightly higher quality actually, I can't remember the brand, I don't think they're Panasonic. So I'm a bit too tight for that, but um, take two of these out. My bent legs. Now, as always, the negative leg is shorter. Okay, so uh, we'll take two of those. Lovely. And pop the board over so we can see where it's going to go. Right there, it's at the centre. Now we can see CM880 and CM876. What we want to do is take our capacitor, pop the long leg through the unshaded side because the unshaded side is positive and the dark side is negative. I'm not going to go into cathodes and anodes right now. So there's one of those, lovely job. Okay, we'll take the other one and same again. We'll put the long leg, which is positive, through the unshaded side and the short leg, which is negative, through the shaded side, that's right. Now, one of the issues that you often have is when you turn the board over, guess what happens? The fall out. So, I'm gonna go and grab a little bit of blue tack and blue tack them into position. One lump of Smurf poo to the rescue. I'm lifting the board up so that they can be held flat without the leads touching the table. It leads legs, same difference. Pushing the blue tack in just to hold them and stand them up against the blue tack. It's just a very temporary um, tacking job, as you can see there. Okay, and we're going to zoom out slightly so we don't keep losing focus. Okay, yeah, so. So I've just blue tacked these into position and then flattened them against the board as much as possible. Okay, so they're held in position whilst we flip the board over and locate the leads sticking through the board. And this is really handy, you see, because look, they're nice and firm there. We'll just grab some solder and we'll solder those on. So please excuse any camera shake that I might introduce. Now, when you're soldering a component, always get the lead and the pad at the same time. That's right, and then lead and the pad, same time. Well, that one up. I'm working so far back here it's untrue. And the pad at the same time. And then apply the solder to the lead and the pad. So I'm deliberately doing terrible soldering here to show you how easy it is. Now that first joint, I was tempted to actually fake it and go back and do it again. But I'm applying heat to the board joint and actually going to take the uh, solder off of that joint and do that one again because it's so, so very poor. It's very hard to solder looking through the camera. Okay, so we'll just have another little go at that. Well, I will always admit my mistakes, YouTube. There we go. 
slightly better. It's still bulbous, which I don't like. But what needs must. It's very difficult to solder in this fashion. However, rescue it like that. They're fine. They're okay, those solder joints. They're certainly better than the ones that were there before. So all that remains to be done is to go and get these side cutters and snip these off as close to the board as these are. Okay, so side cutters. Tonk, 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 tonk. Close to the joint as possible. Da -da. Close to the joint as possible. Da -da. Close to the joint as possible. And da -da. there we go. The four legs are off. One a bit higher than the others, but um, I think um, generally speaking that the soldering's all right. Now that I've um, reworked that. What I like to do is just have a little rub over the board and feel if there are any little bits of um, solder that have gone astray. There sometimes are tiny little bits that the camera picks up and the human eye doesn't, which is always bloody worrying because uh, most of the repairs I do are nothing to do with the camera. But um, that looks near as damn it good. Of course, the camera has the uh, advantage of contrast, which I don't, so <sighs> good. Yep, happy with that. Um, I'm going to put the TV back together now, now that I've done that, and we'll see if it works. I'm not going to bore you, by the way, by showing you the TV going back together in reverse, because that would be utterly ridiculous. But um, we'll uh, join you for the big switch on. Or not, as the case may be. See you on the other side. So here we are for the big switch on. Plug into the socket behind here, socket is turned off, turn it on, and nothing. Uh, let's try it. So pressing the button. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, 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 so, um, ah, no signal, awesome. Let me find the remote. And um, obviously I don't have any sources um, set on here, but let's see what happens if we press a few things. Uh, info, anything? Yeah, so, good. Seems to be working. Excellent. Mute, all that crap, so, um, See what else we can do here. Uh, not a lot actually, because I don't have anything plugged in. But um, there we go. So one repaired TV for the price of about eighty pence. Let's have a quick post mortem of those capacitors with that ESR meter. So what will the advantage of a equivalent series resistance meter tell us? So um, I think what we do we'll power it on. Okay, monitoring for component. We'll take a known good cap, one of the. Uh, brand new ones, it doesn't matter which way you connect these because it works in either configuration so it's analysing and from this capacitor which is 1000 microfarad uh, 25 volt we can see that we've got a capacitance of 1033 microfarad which is good because it's usually plus or minus 10 or even sometimes 20% to be in spec and an equivalent series resistance of just 0.05 of an ohm so this is a good capacitor. Okay, so next we'll try the one that didn't look like it had leaked. So we'll see if this one um, see if it's any problems. Connect up the leads with the clips and it's analyzing. Oh, and we can see that's already half an ohm, so it's ten times well eleven times plus more resistance internally, but it is older. Um, but we can see it's only got a capacitance of 531.8 microfarads, so less than half of the capacitance it should be performing to. So that's well out of spec. So we'll take that out of the ish, uh, picture. And finally, we'll look at this final 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. Um, this is the one that is um, vis visibly, I can't even speak, visibly domed at the top as you can see and um, we'll just connect that up and see what we've got here 
Right, immediately we've got an ESR of 2.8 ohms, which is massively, massively, massively resistive for this capacitor. And um, it's only got a capacitance of 238.6 microfarads out of uh, a thousand that it's meant to be outputting. So uh, we found the issue, we've repaired the TV. That's not to say that some of the other capacitors might not be borderline within the set, but a uh, working set is good. And um, I hope that you've seen this is a proof of concept on how to repair TVs, uh, particularly LCDs that don't turn on. Not the same for CRT TVs, by the way. Anyway, for now, this is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff, signing out and reminding you to subscribe to get your fix. Next thing I'll be fixing, who knows? Who cares? I know you don't. Bye!